Anyway, um, this is taking on core coaching to the future, and I've got some stuff up here if you want to pass it around during the presentation. So the first thing is the overview. We're going to talk about training topics. We're going to talk about wearables and heart rate monitors. That's really the key thing that's really trending right now. Uh, racket sensors, video analysis, mirroring, and then some apps for your tablets and smartphones. So the trending topics. What happened? I'll get it. All right, so the trending topic, uh, as long as I don't click on a photo, I think I'll be OK, is the worldwide sales of wearable devices went up 163% in 2015 from 2014. That's your Fitbits, that's your, um, your garments, your polar devices. There's a vast array of wearable technology that's coming out. They're putting uh, wearable technology in the clothing that you wear. Um, it, it, it's, this is a big jump and it's gonna keep on getting bigger. Um, especially when you're dealing with athletes and you want to be able to monitor what they're doing, where they're going. Uh, there are soccer clubs, football clubs that are putting GPS monitors on their players to track to see how much they are running and moving throughout the practices because they really want to monitor how much activity that they're doing. Um, we could kind of do the same for our tennis players, it just we haven't caught up to that yet. Um, Another thing is zone training. Um, Orange Theory is one of the, the rising fitness things in the industry, fitness programs in the industry. We've been doing what Orange Theory came out with for over 10 years with cardio tennis. We have been leading the way in zoning training, but we haven't really been pushing through with it. So I highly suggest if you get the opportunity to take a cardio tennis licensing course, please do so. Um, if you do cardio tennis the right way, everyone on the court will be wearing a heart rate monitor. That way everyone can manage to see where their heart rate is. If they're not doing enough, then they know they can pick it up. If they're doing too much and they're in the red, then they can back down back to the orange. So if you guys aren't familiar, there's uh, different levels. There's gray, blue, there is green, which is the third level, orange, which is level four, and then red, which is level five. And you don't want to get, get above level red, or else that's very expensive and as far as insurance and hospitals. Um, the next training topic in the area of fitness, because as we're going together as tennis professionals, we need to look and see what the other industries are doing. And one of the training topics is body weight training and functional fitness. That's being able to train anywhere. How many of you gone to a local park and seen a group of five, 10 people doing what, what you would call calisthenics, push-ups, um, burpees, uh, jumping jacks, and they're all in like a boot camp group. That is something that's really jumping off. And um, really another thing, the functional fitness is working on your ABCSS. Okay, that's agility, balance, coordination, strength, and speed. Okay, that's really what people are looking for right now. They're not looking to get huge, they're not looking to, well, everyone's a little bit different, but that's the main thing that's trending right now is they want functional fitness. They want fitness to help them in their everyday lives, and tennis is one of the best avenues we can do that. We just have to be able to market to those people and be able to, to, if you have a beginner or you have a group of beginners or you have a group of people that maybe used to play 5, 10, 15 years ago, well you can say, hey, let's go out to our tennis class and tennis groups and get us, get us going. The days of us hitting a ball and having four people in line watching one person hit a ball are over. If you're still doing that in your groups, you may not have any groups for too much longer because the pro down the street is moving on 
and they're going to find him, and they're going to go see him. Okay? Um, I know Stan uh, only talked about that in his uh, lecture yesterday, so I won't echo that too much more. Um, the next thing is retailers and fitness coaches. Uh, the new trend is you go in and you buy a pair of shoes. Well, at the register, they have an advertisement for the Fit to Run Run Club or the X Shoe Store Run Club where they go and they, they run together. So you're wearing their products, you're with other people that have bought the product at that store, and you guys have a, like a, a community of runners together or, or different things along the avenue. We can, we can do this in tennis most definitely because we're also retailers too. If you're not having a retail with your service, with your teaching, then that's just one area of customer service that you're kind of missing out on. Um, when, when I talked to Alex about bringing in Prince to our club, it wasn't for us to make more money, but it was just to add another selection of rackets and balls and strings for our players to use with. And it's more about the customer service, because no one's going to make a ton of money on the retail side. Um, and that's just a proven fact. It's, it's during the Kirk Hamperman's presentation last night, we saw that most rackets being sold aren't the $200 rackets. It's the junior rackets. It's the rec rackets, if you will, the rackets that you get at Walmart, Target, and that's just for the players to, to hit the ball around. So what you can do is get some of those mid-range rackets for the players that don't know if they want to make an investment of a couple hundred dollars. If you can get a tweener racket and sell it for $60, and they go and they like it, then maybe after a while they'll go in and bump up to a, a better model if, if they want to do that. Wellness tourism. Um, we're in Florida. Um, John, you've worked at a resort. Carrie, you've worked at a resort, of course. Um, when people go on vacation, they don't just want to sit around in their room. They want to be able to drink, have a good time, have fun, but then they also want to stay in shape too and they want to have that extra thing. So especially since we're in Florida, one of the big things for, with wellness tourism is people come down and they're like, oh, we're in Florida, let's play tennis. There's a tennis court at their resort. There's a tennis court at their condo that they're staying at. If we can get out there and make the connections to <coughs> places that only have maybe one or two courts, and say, hey, if you have anyone that wants to take tennis lessons, please let me know. Here's a bunch of my business cards to make those connections. Another thing um, that I've really been successful with in the last six months has been playercourt.com. Um, I know there's also my tennis lessons uh, out there, but I, I really haven't branched off of that. But playercourt.com, um, I just checked my bank account. I just had a $500 deposit from playercourt.com for this past month. That's, a, that, that's substantial. $500 from people that aren't at my club, from people that want to learn how to play tennis, and they don't know where to find the tennis room. Because if you're looking for anything anymore, if you're not online, then you are getting skipped out. Because anytime anyone looks for anything now, the first thing they do is they go to Google, and they go to Bing and Yahoo. Okay, you have to be online. The um, uh, I'll talk about this later. Another thing, in addition to uh, PlayerCourt.com, is Yelp. You have to be on Yelp. You have to set up your business because when when people are searching for you, they have to be able to find you. They want to see reviews. They want to see a couple photos of where they may be possibly taking lessons. They don't want to see a court with 15 cracks and grass growing through it. They want to be able to play in a nice place with low risk of injury and blah, 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 blah. So wellness tourism, that's something that we can all capitalize in this room. Uh, Non-impact cardio, that's the elliptical machines. That's where your, your foot does not come off the ground. It is on a pedestal, and you're able to get a workout um, We've got clay courts, so 
for us, it's going to be more of a low impact cardio. If you can teach somebody how to move properly, then um, like proper starts and proper stops, because that's the big. Those are the two main reasons for injuries: improper starts and improper stops. If if you have somebody and um, who here's had had a mark? You've got you've got little kids. When they run through the house, you can hear them. Yeah. Okay. That's an improper stop. Okay. Whenever their foot hits the ground and you can hear it, it's too it's too much on their on their knees joints, and that's an improper stop. A bunch of your kids are going to grow out of it. I know you you're you're, you're working through it. So. so um, Low impact cardio, I put non-impact cardio because in the fitness centers, that's, that's really what's trending to. I need to talk faster. Are we good? Yeah. Okay, non-impact cardio. Um, next thing, online fitness, classes that stream online. Um, there for a while, you could go and, and get the DVDs. You could do Billy Banks, uh, Typo, you could do P90X, you can do all this. Well, they came with a big packet of DVDs. Who has a DVD player? I can just raise your hand if you have a DVD player. What's wrong with that? There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, is there's no more DVDs. We've, we've, gone, we've gone to the fact, we've gone to the point that we can stream videos in high definition. Stream videos in high definition without buffering most of the time. We're in Florida though and storms take out stuff like that. So then you need to get better service. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a Comcast problem. <laughs> if, hey, if, if you're in the middle of a storm and your power goes out, you got more to do than worry about your online fitness stream. <laughs> okay. Um, unless you're that dedicated to it, but I could get the dogs and the cats inside. Uh, Okay, so wearables. I don't know if you can see it from the back. Um, this is my Polar watch. I've got the Coup de Gras. I've got the V800. Um, it does a, a lot, um, and I'll talk about it here in a second. The one on the bottom left is the Fitbit. Um, you guys have all heard about the Fitbit, right? Okay. Um, and this is the Apple Watch. Uh, I know with our cardio class, uh, some of our members wear the Apple Watch and they like it because they have a heart rate monitor on it. Heart rate monitor, I say that very loosely. There was just a study done um, by Ball State University and I read the article, it was from a, I think it was um, WESH TV in Indianapolis that, that produced the article. On the Fitbit and the Apple Watch, the heart rate monitor can be off as much as 10%. That doesn't sound like much. But when you're working out, I don't know if you can see this thing right here, it's not very clear, but this is from when, uh, I, I took these from when, after I played in the, uh, the, the tournament on Wednesday. Um, my max heart rate got up to 188%, or 188. Okay, I'm out of shape, it was hot as hell. Okay, and I was trying to win. I was trying to go, go after some balls. As you said at one point that I ran 6.5 miles an hour. Maybe that was off. Maybe that was a swing. I don't know. But um, more likely a swing at 6.5 miles an hour. But anyway, if you're off by 10% at 188, round in math, that's 20 beats per minute. That's going from the red zone to the orange zone. That could be a huge difference especially if you're dealing with somebody that may have a condition that they don't know about, okay? So it's very important that we get the most accurate technology possible. The Fitbit heart rate monitor, I've seen that go 7 to, 7 to 11% be off, especially when it gets higher. They're good for activity tracking. They have an accelerometer in it, which, you know, as you move, it will track your steps. Okay, um, I, I want to put Nike Fuel Band on there, but they no longer make those. That's kind of what started the whole track. If you guys remember seeing the commercials with Serena Williams, and she's tracking to see how many, how much active she was, how active she was during her playing. That's really what started the, wear, the wearable on the wrist technology. 
um, the differences between the polar and these two is the heart rate strap. Either the H6 or the H7 heart rate strap for the polar um, devices. My, my watch will connect directly to the heart rate strap. So I can see as we were playing, so yesterday as we were playing in the, in the team challenge, I knew exactly where my heart rate was because I had it strapped up. Um, during the, the doubles tournament on Wednesday, I knew exactly where my heart rate was uh, just by looking at my watch. Okay. Another great advantage of the, of the polar is if you're in training mode, you will not get notifications. Okay. It's sort of a smart watch. I, I can get all my, all my notifications get sent up to my watch, and I don't have to look in my pocket and check every time my phone vibrates. So that's one of the nice things about this. And also, um, so they all do sort of the same thing, and there's different apps you can do. Um, the Apple Watch is a little bit more advanced because it is more of a smarter watch, but Fitbit is kind of crossing over into that, that realm of smart watches. Um, yes, they do tell time too, in case you're wondering. Um, another thing uh, that I like about my, my Polar is it's got a countdown timer on it, and I can just program it real quick, boom, 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 so I know that I have 22 minutes and 19 seconds left for my presentation. Okay. Um, anyone got any questions about the wearables? Did you say the Polar Watch can do emails and texting and all that stuff now? Or? You will get the notification when you get it. Okay? I don't care about sending back anything through my watch. I would rather either type it out on my phone or go to a computer if it's more of an important email. If, it's, if I get an email from Kalakwa with some junk on it about something funny, I'm just going to reply back LOL on my phone and then we're done. I can't. That's interesting. But, I, didn't know if it, I thought that was only on the Apple Watch. So the Polar now has a capability of you receive messages. Yeah. And it's not just on the V800. Lots of them have that too. Um, my fiance has the Polar Loop Crystal too. I bought it for her because it's pretty. It's got crystals on the side. It's, it, it's also fashionable. She gets notifications when she gets text messages, when she has phone calls. It, it, it's in, most of these wearables are, are dual function. They're, they're, they're smart wearables. Um, the technology is good enough now that we're almost like, you know, get smart and we can, you know, talk through, through a watch. I mean, that has been in the playing system in the 60s. So, you guys remember, get smart, right? I'm not the only U30 in here. Paul, you know get smart, right? Yeah, okay. Or did, no, it was Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy. It was Dick Tracy, I'm sorry. Get Smart had the cone of silence. And the shoe phone, that's it. Not to jump all over that. Okay, racket sensors. Um, raise your hand if you've ever used a racket sensor. Okay. Um, Are you counting the play a racket from the bad lap? Yeah. That's the one I played. Yeah. Um, this is the ZEP sensor. Um, I had the ZEP sensor for about 15, 20 minutes. I didn't like it. The way that it stuck onto your racket came off every time I hit the ball. Every time I, I hit the ball, I, I like to hold it low on the grip. Okay? And with my hands here, Every time I went to hit the ball, and as, it, as the contact there is, my hand would bump that sensor off, and it's just it's uncomfortable. So I'm not, a bit, uh, and one more thing is, I'm not pushing any of these products. Um, these products, I, I just want to bring some enlightenment, some, some ideas for you to use. You can use your own, everyone's got different opinions. Some people, John, you like your Fitbit. I like my Polar. That's all there is to it. I mean, you can use whatever you need to, um, but it's just different avenues to go down. There's more, way to, one, there's more than one way you can get to work, basically. Okay? So as far as the ZEP sensor, um, this would bother me right here, having the, having the cover over the, the racket grip. Um, but it's one way that you can see how you're hitting the ball, the, the stroke speed, different things like that. Um, this is just a screenshot. Um, 
This guy hit 39% forehands, 33% backhands, served 18%, um, and had 10% overheads. Uh, there's different things, and we'll get into the apps here in a little bit too. The next one is what uh, John was talking about, was the uh, bow block sensor. Does does the same thing, except there's not. It's not an external sensor. It's internal. It's inside the racket. Okay, I know Stan uses it in his presentation sometimes, um, but you can see exactly, you know, the the speed of your hits. Um, there's a heat map on here to tell you where you're striking the ball on the strings, whether it's you're striking it here closer to the frame or more in the center of the racket. The next one is the one I, I, I really like the best, and that's the Sony sensor. And that's the one that most of the racket companies are gearing their rackets towards. Okay? Head, Prince, Wilson, especially Wilson because Wilson is one of the biggest suppliers of the Sony sensor. They're the authorized retailer for it. Um, all it is is there's this button right here. You turn it on. This is the uh, Bluetooth button right there. You sync that up to your device, whether if it's your, your phone or your tablet. What you can do is go through and have these shots. Um, if you look down here, all these red dots, it's the frequency of your shots. So you know this, this looks, it's over a, a period of 30 minutes. What you can do is you can put these two bars in closer together and you can get a, a, a zeroed in time frame and you can really see what each shot did. Uh, this is a heat map of where you're striking the ball. This guy is obviously very good with hitting the ball because there's nothing outside here on the end of the frames and most of the shots are right there closer to the center of the racket. There's no shanks um, after 52 shots. Uh, this is the small spin level. This goes plus minus 10 on each side. Okay, the, the plus is obviously top spin, the minus is obviously underspin. It does the same thing for serves too. So if you're trying to work on someone trying to hit a kick serve and they want to get the brush up the ball, it's a plane and the, and the more they brush up, the higher this spin level number will be. Uh, calculated swing speed and ball speed. So what you do is when you enter the information into the app, you will tell what racket that you're using. It's got all the Sony sensor um, capable or uh, uh, compliant rackets, and you can select your racket so they know exactly what the head size is. And through the accelerometer racket and the, the vibration sensitivity of it, it will, it will pick where the ball was hit on the racket. So if you're working on somebody and they're like, man, I, I'm hitting the ball pretty good today, and then you, you look up there and it was all right here, you're like, yeah, well maybe we can like bend our knees a little bit lower and you know get underneath the ball and maybe hit the ball more in the center of the strings. Um, live mode video. Um, you can take this data and you can have it synced with the video that you take through the app. So you can show the player exactly how they're hitting the ball, the data that goes to it, and then that's just, I, I really like that because that's a great way that you can communicate with your player, showing statistics, showing data, and it helps with the education of the player. Because that's what we want to do. We just don't want to go out there and say, here's your forehand, low to high, low to high. Especially as they progress in their level, we want them to learn. We want them to know and get a feeling. And one thing that I like to do with these things is recalibrate the player. So if the player thinks they're doing something and they're not, you can show them. And then you can go back and, and with, with the videos and everything, you can really recalibrate the way that the player feels something. So that what's going on in their head and what's really going on down here mimic each other. Okay. Any question on the rapid sensors? What's the distance between you and Bluetooth from there? Does it not work at a certain distance? Um, I haven't gone further than 20 feet. 
Um, I, I, well, actually, I have one. So you're on a ball machine. You basically put someone on a ball machine. You sit next to them so that it registers them. If I have somebody on a ball machine, I am this far away from them. Right. I'm not yelling across the court. I'm not standing there behind the ball machine saying, run faster, take your racket back. I, I'm, I'm more of a personal conversation. Well, yeah, I know. That we all are. But my point is, but, to, 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 to connect, are you doing that with ball machine work, or are you doing it across the court feeding to them while they're both. swinging? Okay. Both. Both. I was just trying to get the distance for the Bluetooth and what's most accurate. Yeah, yeah. both. I, I think the range is, I think that, that that was one of the issues that they had when they first came out with it, is they wanted to make the Bluetooth range long enough because most of the time from one end of the court to the other, it's plus 100 feet. Okay. So yeah. I think what they want to do is anywhere that you're on the court, you're going to be able to pick up on that Bluetooth. Okay. I, I thought I played, and I basically stood behind the baseline and my cell phone is on the table. You know, I'm happy. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect. It was good? Yeah. yeah. So that's, I want to say that's maybe about 30 or okay. my well, what was that, about 50 feet or so? About here. Yeah. That's about distance. Yeah. Okay. Any, yeah. So when you're entering the racket in, um, it just picks up the head size. It doesn't talk about anything else about the racket. Well, the racket is already entered. Okay. So the specifications of the racket. So if you have a stock racket, which I know you don't. Um, but the, the, okay, I think you can alter it a little bit. But it's mostly made for stock rackets. Because most players are, are using stop, but I think you can up the up the swing weight or up the balance weight. Anything else? Video analysis. Um, who knows what the logo on the left is? Darkfish. Who knows what the video on the right is? What? No, close. Well, so it looks like Instagram. Um, Dartfish right now is only available for Apple products. I don't know if you guys have read market research on technology, but Apple is losing ground to this company called Samsung. Okay? Um, so I really hope Dartfish comes out for uh, Samsung devices, but until then, there had to be an alternative. Um, I'm a Samsung guy. Uh, you, you may be Apple, which is fine. You can get your Dartfish Express, which is a fantastic app. But I have a 12.2 inch Samsung tablet, okay? I cannot get Dartfish on here. So I had to find another way and I experimented with some other apps. There's a whole list. I mean, if you go to your Apple store, you go to your Play store. There are a whole variety of, of video analysis tools that you can download. These just happen to be the two most popular. There's also Vstrader. Not a big fan of these straighter. I'd rather have one of these two. Okay. Um, Don Johnson, I believe, is a big proponent of, of these straighter. What's his company? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, how to record a video on a cell phone camera? This is what we see a lot. This is what needs to happen. Okay. Um, I mean, I think Charlie bit him. <laughs> well, this is going to be fun. <clears throat> I'm going to find one of my cursors first. We got sound on?
that the check YouTube will be getting shown four videos at once. Just the same bandwidth. Letterboxd vertical videos will be the size of a postage stamp. And it will spread everywhere. Movie screens have always been a part of the market. If vertical videos become accepted, movie theaters will have to be tall and skinny. And all the movie theaters will have to get torn down and rebuilt. And by the time they were rebuilt, me and the Cubans would be old and ugly. Birds with their shoes of the light. We will get stiff necks from looking up. And no one will sit in the front row ever again. And George Lucas will be released Star Wars again. The skinny edition. I was never really able to tell the story that I wanted to tell. This was a great chance for me to experiment with the new technology. You're a jerk. <laughs> Every time a mobile device is used to record video, the temptation is there. Just say no. Say no to George Lucas. Say no to old Lucas. Say no to vertical video. And if we see someone do it, say, You're not shooting that right, Tommy! <laughs> So I, I fell on the internet and I thought that was funny. Um, it's funny because it's true. Um, as we go on here, this is uh, from Coach's Eye. Um, you can go through and you can stop and you can go frame by frame so you can get the player to see exactly what they're doing. Um, one thing here uh, with the player, we were looking, working, um, she was separating her hands too early on her backswing. So we really want to keep her shoulders closed because when she was separating, she was opening up her front shoulder too soon. Um, and we were also working on our head position here too. So we can just demonstrate and, and, and on this and really show her exactly what she was doing. Um, another thing you can do is you can draw, you can, you can put angles. You can't see it very well, but right here there's an actual angle that you can go. So when you're looking at body positioning and the, and the uh, biomechanics and the kinesiology behind this, then you can really dig into what they're doing. Um, this is more of the extended backswing. I really don't like the term ATP and WTA backswing um, at all. I, I really don't like it. Um, in case you are not aware, uh, WTA backswing, a lot of people call it, is where they break the plane. Okay? Uh, the ATP is where they keep it more off to the side. Um, I don't like that term. Uh, I call it extended backswing and abbreviated backswing. And okay, we do it on the serve. We call it, you know, the erotic serve, the abbreviated. Why not do it for the forehand too? Um, because there's a lot of players on both sides. There's a lot of men that hit the WTA forehand. There's a lot of women that hit the ATP forehand. Okay? So I don't really like that terminology, ATP, WTA. But one thing that uh, she is doing here is she has that big, Backswing. Part of that big backswing is related to um, improper junior equipment as they were developing. Okay, as they're trying to get racket head speed, their rackets were too heavy for them as they were juniors. Okay, she's about five foot four and she's an adult. Okay, so when she was growing up, she wasn't a very big person. Her her parents aren't very you know. So um, this next slide here is going to be a side-by-side -side video comparison, okay? Uh, this video was taken about three weeks before, or after this video here, okay? One thing that I really wanted to work on her with was making sure that she was extending more through the ball. With, with the video, I was able to break down her swing and show her that she was not extending through the ball as much as what she thought she was. So I was able to recalibrate her thinking and get that, that arm extended more, okay? Um, this is a high-level player. She does play Division I tennis now. Um, mirroring, no, four or five minutes here left. Mirroring, um, one thing that we do at our club is when we're working with players, sometimes if, if we're doing like a large group setting of, of video recording, especially in the summer when it's hot and we need to take them off the court a little bit. 
I want to make our break times functional. I want them to, to have their own time, but at the same time, we need to really work on some, some different things too and really get to see what they're, they're working on. So in our, in our pro shop, we have a TV mounted up on the wall. I can mirror whatever I took the video of with my Chromecast, which is on the right. This is the, the other version of it here. What it is, is it sticks into the HDMI port of the TV. The other goes into, and it's hooked up here with a micro USB cable. The USB goes in to power it. You have to have Wi-Fi. If you don't have Wi-Fi, you can always get a jetpack and add it to your, to your plan. Um, this is actually what we are using right now for the internet. So when we watch that video, we stream the video over my jetpack. No buffering. Okay. Um, so just some little little things here that to kind of help you through in case you don't have the things in your club. Say you're working in a, a municipality without Wi-Fi and you want to be able to do this, or you want to take videos and show your player the Novak Djokovic backhand. Okay. To be able to do that, you may need to get some Wi-Fi so you don't. So you can show them what it is on your tablet. Um, I really like using my tablet over my phone on the court because they're not always, the parents aren't going to be like, oh, you're on your phone. Well, if you're on your tablet, oh, you're doing, you're actually doing some work. And also, it's a bigger display, too. Um, even though the phones are getting bigger, this is still a lot bigger. So they can see it and you can zoom in a lot more. Um, the, the device on the left is an Apple TV. Uh, you can pair it up with your Apple device. So if you have Apple, I suggest the Apple TV. If you have Google, I suggest the Chromecast. Um, I don't know what the Apple TVs are going for, but I know the Chromecast is going for about 30, 35 bucks. Pretty inexpensive. Uh, apps for phones and tablets. Um, apps to run the hardware. What we had just been talking about. The sensors, the wearable devices, the heart rate monitors. Play around with it before you actually put the device on the court and use it, um, you know, go take some time, take a couple hours and, and just kind of tinker around with it so you really know how to use it before you try to do it during your lesson. Because nothing's more frustrating when you're trying to do something during your hour-long lesson and it's not working and you have to spend what feels like five minutes, which really is like two, just to try to get something to work. It's very frustrating. So be sure that you know how to properly use the, the hardware and the software together. Um, next one is uh, Venmo. Uh, who here has used Ven Venmo? You have, okay, payments, okay? If, if say, Carrie is going to take a lesson from me, and, oh, I forgot my checkbook, I forgot my wallet. Well, I'm not going to let Carrie get away from without paying for a lesson. We're professionals. we got to get paid for this stuff. So what she can do is she can transfer me money through the app Venmo, and she has, if she sets it up properly, there's no, there's no fee. There's no interest. Okay? If that doesn't work, Square. Um, who here uses a Square Reader? Okay? You're on court. What it is is you can put it into your tablet, you can put it onto your phone, you can swipe the credit card. If they don't have, if their credit card's not swiping, you can type it in. The interest rate on, on typing it in is a little bit higher. Um, I know I've got about two minutes left. Um, we're at two minutes. Uh, so Square. We've talked about Yelp and we've talked about TripAdvisor. Um, if you're not on Yelp, get your business on Yelp. Helps generate more revenue. It lets people find you. Um, I had somebody looking for a tennis pro and they saw my, my player court thing. And they didn't really want to go through that. They didn't really know how it works. They didn't want to buy a whole package. Um, so what they did was they went and they, they saw my name on player court was Mike B. So they went and Googled Mike B Tennis Fort Myers. First thing that popped up was my Yelp review. Next thing that popped up was my website. Okay? She called me. Next thing you know, I've got a lesson every week now. Uh, YouTube. I use YouTube a lot to, like I said, that slow motion backhand, there's lots of videos out there. Um, the videos of the ATP and WTA players, they're cracking down on a little bit more, 
but as long as you're not using them for profit, they're going to allow them off for now, I, I believe. Another one is USTA.TV and the Darkfish Library. Okay, it's a great app to have. There's a lot of education on there, as well as play broke down. Players broke down as far as the serve, the forehands, and it's got a lot of the top 100 players on, on that. Um, music. Uh, I use Fit Radio a lot. I have a subscription for it. It's 24 bucks a year, but it's gym music. Um, you don't go into the gym and listen to music that's low beats per minute. It's, it's up-tempo. It's going, it's going, it's going. So I like Fit Radio the best, especially when I'm on the court, because it provides a high beat per minute remix. Okay? Um, you can also use Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, etc. There's a ton of music apps to use. And then Tennis Sport. Um, who here has ever played a sport like basketball where the coach used the board to diagram in place? Okay? Same thing here, except it's on your tablet. The bad thing about using the board with the, the pen and, and you have to erase it to do the next one. Okay? When I use the tennis board, screenshot, it's saved. Then I can now send it out to my players and say, this is what we worked on if you want to remember this drill later on. Okay? Then you can clear it and then go on to the next one. What's next? The next thing that I really feel that's going to be coming out is imagery and visualization using um, visual, or, uh, VR headsets. Okay? Uh, there was a video that came out, uh, let's see here, during Indian Wells, I believe, of Isner re watching one of his matches with 365 degree capability watching him play his opponent, okay? Who here has done imagery with their players before? Okay, especially when you're working with high performance, this is gonna be another avenue that you can help do that. There aren't any apps yet through, um, through the stores that are tennis specific, um, so that's why this is the next thing. I, I hope that somebody can develop some stuff to uh, some apps that can really help the tennis players and, and on sports. Um, I know I have one of these headsets. I, I left it at home, unfortunately. But I was able to watch the final four sit in courtside. While the play was going on down there, when I turned my head to the left, I was looking at the empty basket. Okay, timeouts, cheerleaders around on the floor. It was like I was actually sitting in the game, uh, at, or at the game. Uh, if you guys have any questions, here's my contact information. And guys, I know it's Sunday morning. This is always the lowest day. So if you have anything, any questions, um, anything at all, my time's up. Jose is going to come up next. Please contact me. Uh, I want to say I'm one of the most successful pros to get a hold of because I'm everywhere. Uh, website, email, Twitter, Instagram, cell phone number there. So. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you guys for taking your time out, trying to get some education, and thank you so much.